Watch. No, you're going to get over here and watch how he catches it. The misconception of fawns thinking they're just gentle, sweet creatures, but a three-month-old fawn is a strong, wild animal. I still remember the first one that I caught, and I had absolutely no idea what to expect when I went in there. I ended up getting kicked a few times. Okay. Scott, this is his first year, so I know he's got to be a little bit nervous. And also, being a man, you got to show the other guys that you can do it. Those back legs become basically big sledgehammers that have sharp razor blades on the end, and they're just going to light you up. Everybody's first time, my answer to them would be, you're going to get lit up. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the creation of the white-tailed deer. May we grow with knowledge to preserve what you have given us as we are in amazement of this animal. May it remind us of your glory and your presence in our lives. We pray that your Holy Spirit will guide us to be respectful of your creation as, as our, our souls, souls find, find peace in your great outdoors. outdoors. Amen. Conquest 200 is brought to you by Key Apparel, makers of Polar King. Rule the elements. Today, Doug Roberts is beginning the fawning process. This means each fawn will be taken from mom and given official ear tags. Once tagged, they're split up by gender and then released into their own pen with the other fawns to start life on Conquest Deer Farm. Well, when September comes, that is the time of the year when we start looking at weaning the fawns off their moms. In other words, we're bringing them in to the facility, we're gonna sort them away from their moms and we're gonna tag them, uh, medicate them, identify them, and they actually go off on their own. So it's a very uh, exciting time of the year to find out what we have as far as uh, buck fawns and doe fawns. But it's also a very stressful time of year because uh, you got newborn fawns that have never been in that barn or that facility and some of the moms have only been in there once. Today is also a very big day for a fawn named Valor. He's not only getting ear tags, but will also be reintroduced into the whitetail herd. Raised as a bottle fed, Valor beat a severe case of Giardia. Now healthy, it's time for him to become a true whitetail and meet the others. Some people would think that it's, it's very mean that you're taking uh, the babies away from their moms. And they do miss each other for a day or two, but they're self-sufficient. The fawns at this point have weaned themselves. They're on solid food. They're eating the pellet. They're eating the grass and the clovers. Uh, they're drinking on their own. They're, they're no longer on milk. At this point also, we have to understand that we have to get mom back into good condition physically so she can rebreed. And this is what happens in the wild, is that at a certain point, mom kind of kicks those fawns away so she can be on her own and get bred. We're doing the same thing on the farm. Excited about it, you know, everybody's teasing me a little bit, saying that, you know, it's, it's not hard, but it, it can be a bit of a, a bit of a rodeo out there. So, you know, we have Doug always, always behind us, you know, teaching us the ways of you know, the deer farming world, and it's, I just feel so super confident anytime he's around. Moving each herd into the facility can be an intense moment, and Doug has called in extra help for today's events. What did I say this time? Close it, close it, close it. I did say that. But it was a lot louder, it sounded like. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Is that close it? Here's the employees. I, I have Nate, which has done the majority of the catching of the fawns and the holding of the fawns. Now Nate's six foot four, 250, big guy, okay? He can physically handle them, but when you're doing a lot of fawns, um, it, it still gets tiring, it, it wears on you. Then I've got Scott coming in that's just learning, and that's why Nate's here, is he's helping teach Scott how to grab and hold them, because Scott's never done this. This is a new process for Scott. I'll carry this in with me. 
and then you hand me the taggers through the opening as I need them, and I hand them back to you. Talon, because of his back injuries and neck injuries, really has not caught fawns for the, the last number of years. He's done the paperwork and refilling syringes and getting the tags ready, doing the DNA part, uh, collecting the hair and filling those envelopes. But I want to get him involved. I want to get him and Scott involved in catching the fawns and holding them so those two can start taking turns and giving Nate a break. Uh, but Scott, this is his first year, so I know he's got to be a little bit nervous. Watch. No, you're going to get over here and watch how he catches it. I stand here and hold it. Nate does go through a lot of pants. Yeah, the nerves kick in right away as I uh, see Nate go in and do the first doe. Uh, these things are a little bit bigger than what I was expecting them to be and definitely wound up. It's not just going to be walking in, grabbing it, and tagging ears. to pull the door for Nate. Okay, everybody's first time, my answer then would be, you're gonna get lit up. When we come back from break, newcomer Scott has a go at catching his first spot. Uh, I wanna let you know Valor is in the building. And later, the employees say goodbye to a fawn they raised named Valor. This segment was brought to you by Hancharic Chiropractic. We get your back in the game. Conquest 200 is brought to you by Key Apparel, makers of Polar King. Rule the elements. By Conquest Sense, makers of Evercom and VS1. By Grizzly Coolers and United Deer Farmers of Michigan. By the Dunkel Veterinary Hospital and Armada Grain Company and by 10-point crossbows. Not many can say they go to work on a deer farm, but for the crew at Conquest, the common bond they share is whitetail farming. Every day, the staff arrive at work to continue the process of manufacturing hunting scents. But on this day, a special fawn named Valor being reintroduced into the whitetail herd. So me and Nate have been catching fawns for quite a while, so we kind of know the game plan and how it's kind of going to run. Uh, but Scott, this is his first year, so I know he's got to be a little bit nervous. And also being a man, you got to show the other guys that you can do it. I remember the first one that I caught, and I had absolutely no idea what to expect when I went in there. I ended up getting kicked a few times. Now understand, their hooves are extremely sharp at that age. And what happens is those back legs become basically big sledgehammers that have sharp razor blades on the end, and they're just going to light you up. They'll rip right through pants, they'll rip right through shirts, they'll, they'll slice skin like it's nothing, okay? Uh, this year, looking at the crop, uh, we got a couple of them that are probably gonna touch 110 pounds coming in. They're gonna be a handful for the guys. Mm -hmm. Well, nothing like just getting thrown right into the fire, so, you know, all nerves aside, we just gotta get in there, have a go at it, get a feel for how it's gonna go. You ready, Talon? Yeah. Okay. their legs. Okay. You want there. Okay. There you go. You are so lucky. Probably a buck fawn. Bucks are calmer than those. It wasn't as bad as I was expecting after getting that first one done. Um, I feel a little bit more confident now even after the size of them. So we'll get in there and we'll get it done. Okay. Pull the door. 
Everybody kind of has their own way of catching the fawns. My way is get aggressive quick, grab them, secure them, and then you can rest. Well, Talon has been out of it for a few years because he's had this bad back, and now that his back is feeling better, um, Talon is a wrestler. He's going to know how to grab. Stay to the back end. If you don't, Talon, you're going to get lit up. I wrestled all the way up into college, um, so I kind of know how to maneuver and you know um, hold something tight. Fawns are a little bit different, but once you get that down, you get it down. You know, because once again, the misconception of fawns thinking they're just gentle, sweet creatures, but uh, a three-month-old fawn is a strong, wild animal that has the potential to lighten you up pretty good. Ouch. Ay, 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 ay. But fawns, because they're young, their toenails have not wore off. And so when they get into a piece of fabric, it's just like a knife. They just literally slice. He didn't get his leg cut, but he's going to have burns. You can see the burns here on the side of his leg, but better get in our pair of pants. Yep. We got a few more to do. Coming up next, Heather and Alicia say their last goodbyes to Valley. I've seen deer been tagged since I've been a little girl, so I'm used to this, and I'm not sure Alicia is. This segment was brought to you by High Rack Ranch of Michigan. This week's tip from the Deer Professor is brought to you by Heat Seeker. All the minerals in this rock are 100% natural, so they're 100% digestible. The wild deer behind the farm love these rocks. Now, they're only gonna use them when they need it. Now, there's a difference between a supplement and an attractant. This is a supplement. This should be year-round at their disposal all the time. An attractant is what a hunter would use when they're trying to attract deer into where they're hunting. Yes, you can hunt over these, but a supplement um, needs to be available all the time so the deer can fill in the gaps. If a deer can keep everything at 100% in their system, they're gonna be a healthier deer. A healthier deer means better fawn crops, better fawn growth, and to a hunter, better antler growth. You can maximize your antler potential. Gene Price and Trophy Rock have come up with, in my opinion, the best all-natural supplement in a mineral form uh, that's on the market today. Um, so it's what I use, and the deer, the deer love it. Actually, they're running out, so that's why we're putting two more out there. So that's where we're headed. Every year, Doug and Karen Roberts prepare as much as possible for the arrival of newborn fawns. But Mother Nature can be cruel and unforgiving. In 2015, they experienced the worst fawn crop loss since they started raising whitetails. The infection that caused this devastation is called coccidia, and the impact it made on the farm and the employees was overwhelming. You know, every year we have fawns that uh, mom abandons or they get sick. And we try to save those fawns, but it's a lot of work. It's tiring. Um, we had this buck fawn that uh, we found sick. It was just weak. And, and you find out what's wrong with it. You go through a lot of process. You get medications. You, you feed it. But mentally and physically, it wears on you because you're from 11 at night through the middle of the night, 6 a.m. all day long, feeding this thing, wiping its rear end. You got crap all over here, too. Oh, no. Did I step in it? No. Am I getting it on me? No. no. Yes, I am. What is that? It's what? Is it on my arm? 24 years of fawning. I have never seen a fawn but in such a valiant fight to stay alive. 
I have never fought so hard to keep a fawn alive. <sighs> there were so many times we were just ready to give up. After going through this so many times, you know the signs of death, and you know that it's just time to stop the suffering and put the fawn down. It was a Friday morning, and he said, I want to give you time to say goodbye. I was going to do it this morning, but I wanted you to have time to say goodbye, and I said, just give me four more hours. Okay. No, we'd walk out there with that needle thinking, we just need to stop this struggle for him. And every time we made that decision, he'd come back around again. I still got a heart. I look over and I go, you got one more day. You want to try to keep him alive? It's yours. Otherwise, it's done. I'm going to end it. I'm not going to continue this all summer. What do you want to do? And both Alicia and Heather said, no, 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 we'll take care of it. We'll get him healthy. We're coming, baby. We're coming, sweetheart. Oh, oh, oh. It's my baby. Now that he's strong, and there's no danger anymore, he still can't go with everybody else because he's still a little bit contagious, little, he needs to be fed, he needs to be watched every time it's, you're watching to make sure he's okay even though we know he is. And he's all alone and he's so excited when you come in because he has no one. And you run with him and you teach him how to follow you so he can be part of a herd. And you're trying to socialize with him but you only have a few moments every couple hours and he's so lonely. Thank you. When we return, Valor gets his ear tags, begins his life at Conquest Gear Farm. Conquest 200 is brought to you by Key Apparel, makers of Polar King, rule the elements. By Conquest Sense, makers of Evercom and VS1 by Van Beek Natural Science, and by Ray C's The Extreme Store, by Versa Skins and Herd Evolution. Today, a special fawn named Valor is getting ear tags, and all the employees have showed up to say goodbye. He's about to get his tags, and you don't want him to be afraid. He's in a facility, he's never been, but this is exactly what we wanted. This is what we fought for that whole time. No matter what happens, he's been he's something special already. I'm just amazed he's this calm after being run up here with a four-wheeler. It just, that's what's blowing my mind. He's either out of Superstar or he's out of Tribe. To see Valor like healthy and being a success after everything that we put into him and now he's going to be one of the big deer out there, it's, you know, we made it. It's good to see. From what Valor came from, a skeleton of a fawn that could keep nothing in him. Everything that we put in him, he sprayed out in horrible diarrhea that had parasites in it. Nobody wants that on you. And yet, seven. we continually seven. had to get sprayed by that and watch him not be able to sustain any nutrition. Not to mention having to bleach down every time you went into this pen. I cannot begin to tell you how disgusting this whole process was with him. He made it. Um, what a... He's Valor. He's Valor. You will be happy after this. So I get chosen to go in and hold Valor while Doug tags his ears. It's kind of emotional for me because this I will be the last person to actually hold this deer and, and to, to be in such close contact with him. So it's a great feeling for me and of course all the family has come out to watch this one deer get tagged. Tags. Got his back legs. <laughs> He 
gets the number seven. Of course he gets the number seven, which lucky number seven, whatever, but it's a biblical number. It's a very good number. And I was so happy. Okay. Okay. Swans have been by itself. We're saying goodbye. You're gonna go with the rest of the deer on the farm. You're gonna become a whitetail with the rest of the herd from here on out. Now that Val is tagged, Doug will be moving him and a few others by trailer to their new pen. A place where they'll be provided with the best care and quite possibly become superstars of the future. But for Doug, only time will tell. I have to believe that number seven, Valor, has God's favor upon him. God only knows what he's meant to become. I guess we'll wait and see what happens. Get to the woods and settle down. Okay, here we go. But it's gratifying because it's a success. And everybody here was a part of that success of watching this fawn, very healthy, now become part of the farm. It was worth the work and worth the effort to see this. I love you. Peace out now. You know what? Honestly, after all he's been through, I think this is such a small little snippet of pain compared right. to what he's been through.